Welcome everybody, my name is Michael and today the big story is Bitcoin's drop. It's currently at 53,000 and on some markets as low as 52,000. But if we go and look at what's been going on very recently over the past few hours, we see this. That is a huge flash crash and this was very quick it went down below $50,000 to $48,000 and on some markets even to $47,000. So here on TradingView, it's around $47,800. And if we go up over here, we see it was at $56,697 on the 22nd of February at 748 dollars and by 1314, it was dropping very quickly, 47,000, and it returned all the way up to 54,000 by 15. So a lot of money was lost here. There was a lot of shorts. There was a lot of walls broken, and we're back up at 52, 53, 54,000 range. Uh, this is because we peaked out at. 58,600, 58,700 on the 21st of February. So close to 60,000, but there was a fair amount of resistance. And that's because a lot of money was made over the past month. We jumped through so many hoops to get to $58,000. And it was a rather quick process. Within just a few days, as you see, we went from over here on the 17th of February from 49,161 to 58,000 on the 21st. So four or five days, a lot has happened. The current market cap is below $1 trillion for Bitcoin, but we hit over $1 trillion, which was a huge record last week. And the market cap is at $1.6 trillion, down from $1.75 and $1.8 trillion. So a fair amount of money was lost and burned through over the past 24 hours. But the long-term sentiment is rather bullish. So a lot of people were actually a little bit bearish on the weekends because usually on the weekends, Bitcoin's not doing so well. But on this weekend, we had a fantastic run. And this really started towards the very end of Sunday. For Europe, it was already Monday. And this was just the Black Monday. Okay, whatever, who cares? It was a fair amount of money lost. But this is actually healthy. So this could, there, there's always a possibility, uh, this could be a precedent for a huge bear market crash down to 30000 or $20,000, of course. I mean, there's nothing that you can rule out in cryptocurrency. It'll go higher than you can expect and it'll go lower than you could expect. But most probably the bull market isn't done because the institutional money isn't cashing out. And there was a lot of institutional money pumped in over here. So these guys are not going to be in it to make, oh, 10% gains and then sell. That's not what they're going for. They want to double their money. They want Bitcoin to get to $100,000. They want it to get to $150,000. Yeah, we were almost at $1.8 trillion. And this is multiple times. Bitcoin's dominance is at 62%. And most of the projects aren't doing so well today. Ethereum down at $1,700 and Binance Coin at two. $150. Cardano at a dollar, Polkadot at 35, Chainlink below 30, XRP at 61 cents, and they're doing actually pretty all right for today. 12% up, but over on the past seven days, not so great. So let's look at who the biggest losers were and who the biggest gainers. And the biggest gainer is Crypto.com Coin, which 55% it's not bad for when the market is just blood red, right? And 150% up. But yesterday, I remember seeing them as high as 300% up over the past seven days. So that's not bad with a total market cap over $5 billion right now. And I remember seeing them in the top 50, but they were towards the very top of the top 50. So crypto.com, a pretty big website. It's similar to BNB's path. So we're going to be discussing about that in the future, but we see X. P is down the list. KuCoin is up there. It's another. That's another token right there. IOST. But for the most part, a lot of projects lost money today. We have Curve Dow being down. Polygon, Dodo, Waves, Ontology. And for the past seven days, Avalanche, Algorand, and Synthetics are down quite a bit. And Bcash and Bitcoin SV. While for the past seven days on the up, we have Pundi X, Dodo, KuCoin, Crypto.com, and Ravencoin, which has 
been definitely pumped and there we go pancake swap as well and bnb but ravencoin was huge it went up almost 500 percent last week so this was a huge winner 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 chicken dinner hey you'll be able to buy a land rover range rover supercharged for seventy-seven thousand dollars when we hit bitcoin seventy-eight thousand. not too bad but really you can find a nice supercharged here in virginia for sixty-one thousand. we're not far away from there and there's a 2017 Range Rover. Okay, honestly, Range Rovers are pretty crap. <laughs> I know everyone wants them because, like, Kim Kardashian drives it. Ugh, but this is this is pretty crap. I will give you, though, that it looks absolutely fantastic. So let's discuss today. Bitcoin briefly drops below $48,000 as analysts say rally overdone. Yellen comments. Janet Yellen, speaking at a New York Times event, described Bitcoin as a highly speculative asset that is extremely inefficient for transactions, and she also called the amount of energy consumed in processing those transactions staggering. Whoa, this is definitely not news. This is what everyone really knows, but hmm, if we really wanted to go down this route, yeah, there's a lot of people who want to save the planet, but then they don't realize even simple statistics like my girlfriend the other day, oh my God, we're not recycling. I told her, you know, Leonardo DiCaprio, you know how he's always flying around in his private jet to all of these save the world conferences. We looked up how much fuel was being burned in a single private jet flight. I'll give you a hint. He flew from Cannes to New York back to Cannes. How many cars do you think he could have fueled up <laughs> Ten thousand vehicles ten thousand vehicles or a single vehicle for 30 years so that's not bad ten thousand vehicles for a single day with just one private jet trip and guess what there are between 70 to 90,000 flights per day with jumbo jets cargo jets a lot of big planes a380s People want to save the planet and they're like, buy a Tesla, but they don't realize to produce these Tesla batteries, you need coal, you need a lot of energy. Mm. So don't be telling me that Bitcoin's energy is, oh my God, the energy consumption is staggering. Yeah, you think the banking system doesn't consume a lot of energy? Huh. Let me give you a statistic. Here's Bitcoin mining. Here's fiat currency printing. Here's Christmas lights for the US. There's gaming. Gamers spend more energy than Bitcoin miners. Mining gold spends a lot more energy than mining Bitcoin, and the banking system is all the way over here. Now, obviously, the banking system is a lot larger. 650, I think that's terawatts per hour per year consumed by the banking system, while 60 terawatts per hour per year on Bitcoin mining. Some alarmists claim that Bitcoin uses a whopping 67 terawatt hours of electricity per year, almost as much as the Czech Republic. They're trying to make it sound like a lot. Is it a significant amount? The world uses 110,000 terawatt hours of electricity per year. 110,000. Bitcoin uses 67. Bitcoin uses about six ten thousandths of the total energy consumed by humans. 0. 0.00006 or 0. 0.06 cents out of $100. Six cents out of 100. One inch out of 137 feet. Two or three shots from a 55 gallon drum. A quarter pound meat patty compared to a 400 12 pound fat so one second versus 27 minutes and 30 seconds is that really a significant amount another thing some of the alarmists claim that the energy used by bitcoin is wasted i say that energy is put to good use not wasted the total energy consumption and by the way this was from a month ago so obviously this will always change but the world energy consumption the IEA estimates that in 2013, total primary energy supply was a 157.5 petawatt hours or 1.575 times 10 to the 17th power, watt hours, 157.5 thousand terawatt hours, 13.54 billion tow. I have no idea. That this is just huge, right? Most of the energy and fuel is on coal. And then we have natural gas and there's hydro renewables and nuclear energy and oil and others. But coal is 27% of the total primary energy consumption by fuel. So I honestly don't care what Janet Yellen's saying. A 15% correction could happen, taking some steam out of the hot market before reaching new highs. The CIO for Paris-based quantitative trading firm Exo Alpha. The more upward parabolic and fast a move, the more fragile it is. So a pullback would be more than welcome. Listen, guys, this is healthy. This is what... I've been talking about for a while. The market moves up. It's very simple, logical. People made a lot of money. They want to sell. They're buying their Range Rovers. They're buying the Porsches. They're happy with their profits. And they're either going to buy back in or they made so much money that they're able to retire. And I know people who retired the last Bitcoin bull run who are not investing ever again. 
maybe because they just simply don't care, or they might have invested right back into Bitcoin again because they're going to make millions more. But these are people who bought their own hotels. These are people who bought their own apartment complexes, and they're retired. They're able to live out the rest of their lives only reinvesting in these apartments, uh, hotels, whatever they want to do. It would kind of be silly not to invest a little bit back into Bitcoin and stocks and whatnot. But that was the last bull run, and there's a whole lot more this bull run. And when we get to $100,000, you can guarantee that it'll double. There's going to be so many new multimillionaires, not just millionaires, multimillionaires and new billionaires. There already are <laughs> this time around. This is crazy. So the recent rise from $30,000 to $58,000 was really steep. The rise from $10,000 to $30,000 also really steep. So suddenly for a pullback, even if it's $10,000, that is a lot. But in the cryptocurrency world, it's a lot because we rose so much. And we're used to seeing 10, 15, 20% drops even, even 100% drops in a single day if we're just looking at the tw past 24 hours for crap coins, right? But for Bitcoin, a 20% correction is very painful for people who are new, but it's nothing crazy. It's not staggering. It's not like, Ugh! Technical indicators such as the RSI and stochastics across numerous chart timeframes are indicating that the crypto asset is overbought, implying that we could soon see a retracement. Supporting the case for a price pullback are rising U.S. inflation-adjusted bond yields. So these are macro factors. The 30-year inflation-adjusted yield or real yield has turned positive for the first time since June 2020. How low might Bitcoin go? The pullback can easily extend to the former resistance turn support near $42,000. And in the worst-case scenario, it might hit even $30,000 zone. However, $52,000 is major support, adding that a significant correction may remain elusive and the derivatives market is no longer exhibiting excess bullishness. However, a lot of analysts, a lot of people around the world are long term bullish and they're confident that Bitcoin will reach new record highs above $60,000. And honestly, I am also confident. We could be completely wrong, and for that, it's always good to cash out a little bit as you go on the way up. I cashed out a little bit. It's nothing huge because I'm still confident that I'm able to cash out $10,000 or maybe even $15,000 by the time all of this is done. At my lowest point this year, I remember I uh, was receiving $5,500 worth of Bitcoin that dropped to $4,500, and I was like, ah, oh, gosh, you know, there we go. That's Bitcoin. Well, all right. It'll probably rise back up. And it did. And then I found $500 worth of Bitcoin that's probably worth now 600 bucks. And it was worth like $100 last year. So library credits. I remember I was getting like 20, 30 bucks. And the high recently was like $70 per month. I had one day where my Binance coin gains were over 50%. These are crazy numbers. So let the market heat down a little bit. No, not heat down. Cool down. What am I talking about? Ooh. Let the market cool down for a little bit, and we will probably see $60,000, $62,000. I'm not really good with technical analysis. I don't really understand this stuff, but I watch a lot of YouTubers. I watch a lot of these trading experts, gurus, whatever, and they're saying, oh, Fibonacci levels point to $62,000, $62,500. All right, well, if we're going to get to $62,000, that's a cool price point to be at if we get to $100,000 later this year. All right. But it is uh, making me feel a little bit better that we had this drop because... The higher it goes and the steeper it gets, you really do get a little concerned. You're like, okay, where is the point where a whale is just going to sell a billion dollars worth and it's all going to crash back down for like the next week or two? Because, you know, you want to plan out when you're cashing out. I'm going to cash out a little bit above uh, $60,000 again. That's going to pay for some bills and the rest is going for a car. And uh, I mean, at this point, I can kind of buy a, a decent car, even with the crash. So I'm really happy about that. It's going to get me to work. I need a car. There's there's just no public transportation where I'm moving back home. It's not a huge amount of money that I have. You know, if it was like $60,000, if it was $100,000, all right, whatever, I could invest a lot with it. The best investment I can make right now is buy a car, get to work, and I'll make six, dollars $7,000 within you know, less than three months, so that's not too bad. The rest I'm going to be using for reselling. We're going to be making video about reselling pretty soon, and all for all those who are coming over from Kubera or from any other YouTube channel, I just wanted to thank you. We have hit over 550 subscribers, and our watch time hours are now very close to 600, meaning for the first time ever today, or actually yesterday, we have beat, in terms of watch time hours, our subscribers, and that's a good thing because we need 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch time hours, so I think we're on a very good path. We're 
We're about to hit 10,000 views. And just as Bitcoin's breaking new all-time highs, I'm happy with the progress for this YouTube channel. Some of my videos as of last week, we had the most viewed video get to 400 views. So that's really good. Every single video that we posted except one over the weekend went way past 100 and multiple went way past 200. So thank you for your support. I appreciate every single one of you and see you at 1,000 subscribers. So have a good one and daily content. See you guys again tomorrow. Yeah, I was traveling and I had to go to a doctor yesterday. My ear, you know, some some issues with it. Also, I had to go to a dentist over the weekend. So, so those two weren't really pleasant, but those are necessary things. And, and also, you know, you don't really want to pay for it, but you have to because it's going to hurt. <laughs> so my ears and my teeth are very important because they're also going to be very, very expensive if I don't fix them. <laughs> Not that you can fix tinnitus, but it was, uh, I went deaf. I went deaf for over 24 hours because of earwax buildup. And when you have tinnitus and sensitive ears, you can't just remove the earwax normally. So uh, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> All right, guys, have fun.